Leia here from LeiaForSci.com, and in this video, I'll take you through a comparison of Friedelcraft's alkylation and Friedelcraft's acylation. If you missed the videos showing you the individual mechanisms, you can catch them on my website at LeiaForSci.com slash EAS. Friedelcraft's alkylation is the reaction that lets you add an alkyl or carbon chain to the benzene ring in the presence of a Lewis acid catalyst such as AlCl3. So when faced with an example like this, you may think that the reaction is simply benzene with three carbons. And so when given this example, you may think that the product is a propyl benzene. But this is not the answer. The product of this reaction is actually an isopropyl benzene. And so the question is, how did we go from one chloropropane to an isopropyl substituent? This is actually one of the three limitations of the Friedel-Crafts alkylation reaction. When you study activators, deactivators, and directing effects, you're going to see that an alkyl group is considered activating. This means that when you do Friedel-Crafts alkylation one time, the ring will be activated and another alkyl group will add and another group will add, making it somewhat impossible to control the reaction. A second drawback, as we saw here, is a carbocation rearrangement. And finally, alkyl groups are orthopower directing. And while this may not be a drawback, this is something you want to keep in mind if perhaps you want to do a reaction with a meta substituent instead of orthopara. So let's take a look at what went wrong with the initial reaction, and then I'll show you how to get that product using Friedelcraft's acylation. We started with a 1-chloropropane. When turning 1-chloropropane into a super electrophile, you wind up with a primary carbocation intermediate. This is considered very, very unstable. And when you have a hydrogen on a more substituted carbon nearby, such as the secondary carbon here, the hydrogen will grab its bonding electrons and shift over to the primary carbon, resulting in a hydrogen on the primary carbon and a carbocation on the secondary carbon. By the time benzene joins in on this reaction, it winds up attacking a secondary instead of a primary carbon, and so we have the isopropyl group attached. When chlorine grabs the hydrogen in the final step to reform the aromaticity, we have an isopropyl rather than a propyl group attached. So how do you avoid the carbocation rearrangement? You start with a Friedel-Crafts acylation reaction. For Friedel-Crafts acylation, we'll use the same starting three carbon molecule with a chlorine, but we have a carbonyl giving me that acyl component. The super electrophile for this reaction is an acylium, which is carbon triple bound to oxygen with one lone pair and a positive charge, and don't forget the other two carbons on the chain. When benzene attacks the acylium, there is no possibility for carbocation rearrangement because that positive charge is sitting between a carbon and oxygen and not just on the carbon atom. In completing this reaction, we have the propyl group attached linearly rather than an isopropyl, but the problem is we now have that carbonyl that we have to get rid of, which is no problem. There are two simple reactions that you can use to reduce an acyl group to an alkyl group, and most courses will require you to know the name and the reagents, but not the mechanism. Clemenson reduction is an acidic reaction where Zn and Hg in the presence of HCl will cleave off that carbonyl and give you the desired alkyl product. The Wolf-Kishner reduction is a basic reduction where H2N and NH2 or simply N2H4 will react in the presence of KOH and heat once again to cleave off that carbonyl and give you your alkyl product. Acylation followed by reduction is very important if you want a reaction without carbocation rearrangement, if you want a reaction that will not continue adding alkyl groups, and this is also useful to keep in mind in multisynthesis if you want to have a meta substituent added next, what you would do is acylate, add a meta substituent, and then reduce the molecule. Be sure to join me in the next few videos where I help you understand activating and deactivating groups in a logical manner and how it applies to ortho, para, and meta directing effects. You can catch my entire electrophilic aromatic substitution series on my website, layerforsci.com slash EAS. Are you struggling with organic chemistry? 
Are you looking for resources and information to guide you through the course and help you succeed? If so, then I have a deal for you. A free copy of my ebook, 10 Secrets to Acing Organic Chemistry. Use the link below or visit orgosecrets.com to grab your free copy. After downloading your free copy of my ebook, you'll begin receiving my exclusive email updates with cheat sheets, reaction guides, study tips, and so much more. You'll also be the first to know when I have a new video or live review coming up. If you enjoyed this video, please click the thumbs up and share it with your organic chemistry friends and classmates. I will be uploading many videos over the course of the semester, so if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, do so right now to be sure that you don't miss out.